Hey everybody, how's it going? A little bit of a different video today. Uh, I dug out, this is one of my saws. We'll see you know what this is. It's a legendary still MS200T. Uh, this is one of those saws, if you go way back in my channel, back when there was no uh, editing or video quality, <laughs> we all started somewhere friends. Uh, go back and check it out. I bought a pile of these things. Um, my buddy got them off a of tree service. Basically what they were doing, they were running these things until they either blew up, most of them were blown up or just falling apart and then they'd throw them in a bin. Well, that bin had nine or 10 of these things in it and uh, my buddy bought them and they sat under his bench for five or six years or something like that. And um, I mentioned I wanted one of these and he went, go pull that big bin, and it was big, out, out from under the bench. So I pulled it out, and it was just full of oily, dirty uh, 200T carcasses. So uh, I built, I think I built six of them, and uh, this is the only one I have left. Uh, I, I sold most of them to locals. I think two or three of them went to uh, Alberta. And uh, I just managed to get them together. And then what was what was left, I traded for something. I can't even remember at this point. But uh, this is my saw. I don't use it very often. Uh, a large fellow like me ain't the best at climbing things, if you guys have ever noticed. Uh, uh, I always use the analogy, a bear riding a tricycle. That's what I look like climbing trees. Now, as a kid, I remember I used to climb trees like crazy. We had this big old maple tree in the backyard. It was taller. We had a two-story house. I used to climb that thing right to the top, friends, and then I could see the whole neighborhood. You know, I felt like I was king of the mountain. And my mom would get home, and she'd come in the house, and she'd call my name, and I'd, you know, you're a young boy. <laughs> Nobody can find me up here. And she'd come outside, and I'd go, hey, mom, look up. And, oh, I feel terrible now, friends. My mom would yell at me to get down from the tree, and as a kid, I didn't think anything of it, but... I haven't climbed a tree in many years and I don't plan to, but I, I, I kept this because I thought maybe I'll learn how to climb trees one day. It would be very handy out here. I do own a lot of trees, but uh, anyhow, who knows, maybe I'll pass this on to, uh, to a tree climber that's starting out or something. But for now, uh, I use this all the time to prune trees. I throw this on the mower. Uh, it fits between my legs on my mower and I just drive around and if I need a power saw I just fire this thing up and do a little tree pruning. So that's typically what this thing does. I use it, you know, I use it in uh, springtime before the, the pitch starts running. Uh, I'll drive around and, and cut trees back. Um, and then once again I'll usually prune a little bit in, in fall. A lot of the trees in our in our hedgerow here in our you know we got windbreaks they grow like weeds and you got to cut them often multiple times so um, that's what I use this for and it's it's done me well now in today's video uh, I actually broke the mounts on this saw oh, right here okay so uh, I got new mounts a while ago and I just kind of it slipped my mind friends so. I want to get this thing ready. Spring is just around the corner. It's getting warmer out. It's been minus 10, minus 5. Uh, the snow's starting to melt. We are going to flood here though, so I'm going to have to keep an eye. Uh, i got to dig my pumps out. Uh, I'll have to put a sump pump in the shop here because guaranteed um, this thing's probably going to fill up with water in spots. So we'll make videos of that when it comes. It's all just good video content, right? The Tin Man Saw Shop floods. It is what it is. But in the meantime, I want to get this thing ready for spring. Um, this is a good running saw. I did a new piston, rings, crank seals. Um, I didn't port this, friends. This is stock. It, uh, it, it goes pretty good. It does have a base gasket to leak. And I hogged out the muffler. I cut a big slot uh, in the back of the muffler. It's pretty loud, but it rips pretty good. These are one of the best running small displacement saws I've ever sampled. Um, like the Husqvarna 44 that I run, that thing's incredibly strong. And it'll pull a 16, 18 inch bar all day long. It'll pull a 3H chain. And again, that's only 44 cc's. So, so 
Uh, we're going to tear this down and put new AV mounts in it. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have one of these, and if you have trashed AV mounts, let's, uh, let's fix them up. Bring you guys in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you guys can see this one just completely tore. Uh, last year it tore when I was doing my tree trim, and I don't know if you guys remember that video, but... Uh, I was trimming trees with this thing and a McCullough. And uh, after that, I noticed, geez, this thing's kind of wobbly. And uh, the mount was actually broken. So, okay, so I'll take the first bolt off here. Now you go through here. There's two bolts. Let's see if we can do this without completely tearing this saw apart. I have done this before, but it's been a while. I haven't worked on one of these in, what, three years? Well, time flies, eh? That was probably three years ago that I did that. Two and a half years. I've only been doing YouTube for about, uh, I believe it's three years this month. So, it's awesome. Thank you to everybody that hangs out here. I have a lot of fun doing this. Okay, pull that one out. And there's our front AV mount. Now I'm just going to leave that loose. There is a, that's the ground for the kill switch. So make sure, make sure that you uh, take that off and put it back on. If you don't put it back on, your kill switch won't work. Okay, there's the same kind of bolt at the back here. Okay, right there. Now, I'm going to attempt to do this without pulling off the carburetor, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Let's pull this off here, just so I can have a look-see. Okay, there's your rear mount right here. This mount and this mount are the same, and the left-hand mount is different. So, Oh, and that's the smaller one. Hold on here. These rear two are T20s, not T27s. Okay, pull this off. I know I could use power tools, but I honestly rarely do. If you're gonna use a power tool, use it for teardown is what I find. I, I don't like to put stuff together. I'm just not very brave, friends. <laughs> Stuff tends to get broken in a hurry when I put it together with air tools. Okay, so there's your rear mount. Yeah, look at that. See, it's starting to rip. So I think we're doing I think we're doing some good maintenance here for this thing. Okay, let's see if we can pull this front mount out. There it is right there. Can't wait for spring, friends. It's it's been a long, cold, cold winter. We're going to get out there as soon as the snow gets manageable. We're going out there and we're running power saws. Um, I miss running power saws. I love doing it. And uh, it's been a while since I've been on a power saw. So, Okay, same thing. This one's super squishy. Okay. This is going to be a good deal. This saw has been kind of a wet noodle for quite a while. Again, you can see the wires there. Make sure that that wire stays plugged in underneath, okay? Because if not, your kill switch will cease to kill anything. So I've done that before, and then, you know, you get out into the field. I'm just going to rip that off with a pair of pliers. Okay, just grab these little needle nose vice grips. I'm sure it still has a tool for this, but I don't have one. There we go. It's hard to have tools for every saw. I mean, I guess if I worked in a still shop, I'd have that, but I work on absolutely everything. So, there we go. Look at this thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's our three old mounts. We'll throw those in the garbaggio because... They're no good for anything now. Okay, new mount. What I'm probably going to do is put a little bit of Loctite on there. 
It's because if this ever goes to a tree guy, because who knows, right? Um, it'd be nice. It's a good running saw, so might as well put a little Loctite on there, and then you can know that it's not going to come out. It shouldn't, but if it does, if it does decide it wants to move, then uh, the Loctite will stop that. Okay, let's just tighten this down right like that. There you go. A little Loctite in here. Or a lot of Loctite. You almost think I have shares in Loctite the way I use it. I Loctite a lot of bolts on this channel. Only for one reason. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, why won't that nut come loose? Because it's still, half the mount is still in there. I use Loctite because I started off, I worked on Harley Davidson. So that was what I did for years. And, uh. Old Harley shake everything. If you could Loctite the light bulbs in, you would. Believe me. Uh, I had a saw that vibrated, or I had a bike that vibrated so bad, it would eat batteries all the time. So, let's hold on here. I had to grab a different bolt from my fasteners collection. I didn't like the way that other one was going in. Yeah, back to Loctite, friends. You guys will like this story. Uh, I used to go to Daytona Bike Week every year. Uh, with my buddy, we drive down there, which is like a 40 hour epic, no stopping trip. We took a 76 Chevrolet down there, towing a trailer, and uh, it was it was epic. I can't believe we made it. My brother and I were talking about that last night, laughing about the epic trip to Florida. Now, I was riding my chopper then. I'll have to dig out a picture for you guys sometimes. It was uh. It was a pretty radical machine. I built it in my garage. Uh, I was a young man then, and uh, it was pretty cool. I That thing vibrated like crazy. Now, I put that thing back together the day before we left for Florida. Uh, I took the motor down again because I used to do that kind of thing, and I wanted more power. So I got the heads done, ported and flowed, and I uh, wanted more power out of that thing. Well... It vibrated really bad. It was a rigid. Uh, I rode rigids for quite a few years. Really good for the back. <laughs> it was fun though, right? And uh, it was a rigid and it vibrated like crazy. Just putting this front mount in. A little drop of Loctite on there. So it was one of the last, it was the second last night of Daytona. My buddy and I pull on to the highway and I used to go down there and a whole, a whole group of guys that I knew from my area were down there. So it was fun, right? And uh, we pulled onto the highway. My buddy's bike was built and so was mine. And we both just absolutely honked on it. Well, he started, he started going and next thing I know, this one doesn't need Loctite. It, it threads into plastic. Next thing I know, my bike starts breaking up. <laughs> I fried my battery, friends, from the vibration. Uh, <laughs> riding long distances on a rigid. I was driving from Orlando to Daytona every day, which I can't remember how many miles that is. Some one of you will know in the comments, but it's a pretty fair journey at high speed because you Americans, I like your roadways. You guys boogie. Like, you guys don't mess around. When you're going somewhere... You're doing 90 mile an hour. <laughs> Good times. So, anyhow, friends, I had to push my bike back because my buddy was gone. And by the time he even realized, it was probably he was probably 10 minutes down the road. And by the time he realized that my bike or I was gone, and he just figured I found somewhere to hang out and I pulled off. I pushed that bike home for about an hour on a US freeway incoming towards traffic it was crazy but anyhow <laughs> oh to be young again hey eh? that was fun those are some of the best times uh i've had but you know what friends as i get older uh i think my life's getting better and better and i'm having more fun now this youtube thing's been an absolute blast so maybe we'll have to go back down to daytona one time on the youtube or and do a video i haven't been there since 2004 or 2003 uh, the last year I was there, I think there was a million people. 
Good time. So that's where a lot of this comes from, this modifying engines. Uh, I used to do Harleys, and uh, I had a lot of fun with that. I really did. That's a big dollar game, though. Now, these all thread into plastic, so um, no Loctite needed. Yeah, used to have a lot of fun. Uh, I remember that year I brought my bike there. There was a little bit of a dyno shootout at night right by the racetrack off of International Speedway Drive there. Any of you guys that have been down there. And uh, I put my bike on the dyno and I did quite well. I was 20 years old then. How old was I then? 20, 21. It was, uh, it was a good time. That's where I learned how it's not what parts you bolt on, it's, home, you know, that's where I learned about built horsepower. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money then, friends. I was 20 years old, 21, but I had time, and I learned how to modify engines by, I met a lot of old timers that have been doing it, and I just, I studied what they did, and um, read a lot of books, and here we are. Now we're doing two strokes. Okay, reef this down. Now, I'm going to grab this with my pliers, okay, because you don't want to overspin it. Okay, there you go. Oh, wow. This thing's never been like that. Like, she's stiff. I wonder if this thing will start. This thing has been sitting. I tried to start it on the 40 below Will of Power Saw start uh, video I did. A lot of you guys enjoyed that. I thought that was kind of fun. It didn't mean nothing. There was nothing scientific about that other than me just having fun. Uh, some of those saws, if I tune them, most of those saws have been sitting forever. So let's see if this thing starts. It's been quite a while. I have not fired this thing since, uh, I don't know, last spring. So almost one year this has been sitting. It's got Optimal in it and the same gas that it's been running. Will it start? Okay. Will it start? I'm going to pull it over a couple times to prime it. Look at the compression of this little devil. Give it a couple, give her full choke. <laughs> this is a good saw. sitting in a junk pile for years. And I built it. Pretty cool. I'm thinking that uh, I'm thinking that clutch bearing needs some oil. You guys hear that rattling? Listen. Hear that? Probably needs a little oil. Nice saw. I really, friends, I really like these 200 keys, and I don't even climb. They're uh, they're nasty, and it's too bad they don't make them anymore. But you know what? Uh, I got a buddy that climbs every day. He runs a 201 now. At first, he didn't like it, but now uh, he says it's been a great saw. It's got lots of power. I think he did a muffler mod to it. And uh, unfortunately, friends, I guess you got to keep with the times or, or run vintage stuff. I'm a vintage saw kind of guy, and that's why one of the reasons why I have this channel is you guys that want to run the old stuff, keep it going. Uh, not everybody's a mechanic. I just play one on YouTube, so. <laughs> and I'm just having fun with you guys. But there you guys go. 200T, ready to rock and roll. And uh, as soon as we have time, this spring, or as soon as it's needed, we'll just fire this thing. And go. What a great saw, like seriously sitting for a year. Opti 2 oil and uh, the the stabilizers that Opti 2 has in it. Uh, I've never had oil, I've never had fuel go bad with that stuff. I have a saw here. I'm trying to think of which one it is. Uh, I have a saw here that's had the same 
gas and oil with Opti 2 in it for like two years and the, the fuel still smells wicked. So, um, kind of interesting. That's one of the reasons why I use that stuff. I have so many saws and I don't run them all the time that, you know, um, I drain saws that I'm going to hang up, but anything that may get run, keeps I keep gas and oil in it and it's like that Opti 2 I've never had fuel go bad with that stuff. So, and I'm talking years and this is ethanol fuel friends. Pretty much all the fuel that we buy here in my province is ethanol, 10% or less. So um, that's what I run. Every saw on this channel you guys have ever seen has ethanol fuel. And I run um, regular, not premium. I know, crazy. <laughs> Anyhow friends, 200T mount replacement, just that easy. And uh, this thing's awesome now, like it's stiff. It's never felt this good. I wish I did this a while ago, but you guys know how it goes. You, you're busy and you're working and stuff gets left. So that's awesome. Anyhow, friends, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.